<laughs> you know, back in the days, maybe a hundred years ago, they made quilts with whatever materials they had. Vintage quilts, they use crayons. Can we use today's technology to embroider the outline and then color it in and have fun? Well, of course we can. This is Sewing Tech Talk. I'm Kathy, and we can take vintage and let's make it modern. So the giveaway for today's video is a great pack of embroidery thread. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. Check back in a couple days to claim your prize if you win. So back in the day, 100 years ago, maybe in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, they had limited resources to make quilts. They still wanted to make really pretty things, right? So basically, we're using limited resources. They came up with some pretty clever ideas to make some really neat quilts. Now, I love vintage quilts, so this is right up my alley. Now, I like to take vintage and make it modern by using the new technology. We're doing machine embroidery, and we're going to color that in with some crayons. Now, you can use just about whatever embroidery design is out there. Just stitch the outline and color it on in. We're going to explore some of those options on the Altair when we get there. But I think it's really fun to take a vintage image using IQ Designer in the Altair and making that vintage image into a modern embroidery design. And with the Altair, using IQ, Desi IQ Designer, you may do it right in the machine. So let me talk through that process, maybe some of the supplies that you need, and then we'll get to the machine and we'll make some vintage magic. Okay, so what you need is a vintage image. So I have my vintage squirrel image right here. And what you do is if you want to render this image into an embroidery in the machine, you use the IQ positioning app. Put the image inside of the hoop, and it can be the large hoop or whatever hoop size hoop that it fits. And you take a picture of it, and it's sent to the machine. Within IQ Designer, you're going to turn this line art into a line embroidery. And it could be whatever size fits in the hoop. We're going to talk about doing something bigger here in a second. But basically, you take this image, send it off to the machine. We're going to go through that. Then you stitch out the outline of the image and you can use mostly use black you can use whatever color that you want then you simply take your color your crayons you color in on the fabric after you've done that heat set it with an iron and voila you have vintage made modern you have a vintage quilt and it's a cool look and it's something that's kind of fun. Now, what I like to do is I like to find stuff that that maybe maybe kids might enjoy doing. So this is a process I think that you could do and maybe engage a child in because they could color in the drawing, couldn't they? Once it's been embroidered. So maybe that would get a kid excited about sewing because children getting excited about sewing, well, that's the future of sewing, isn't it? So just a thought, I think this might be a fun project to share with some younger beginning sewers. Okay, so there's my little squirrel stitched on out. We can do that when we get to the machine, but I want to show you a couple other ideas because maybe, maybe you don't want to make individual blocks. Maybe you want to do a bigger quilt. Well, you totally can. So let's set this aside and let's go big or go home, right? So here is a much bigger full-size quilt, right? Now, you can take a smaller image and Where's my little image? Oh my goodness, I've lost it. Anyway, you can take a smaller image and you can blow it up to be the size that you want to do. And you could do that same process with the Altair, do the individual parts and embroider them out using the machine. So I did the kitty separately from the puppy, from the flowers. How does that look? I'm glad you asked. So you can do a full size hoop and do it in multiple hoopings. So here's my kitty. I embroidered my kitty outline on out. The came on in and colored it in. You see, you can blend it with the colors. You can, remember how much fun you had when you used to color? We can do that again. And we're actually sewing and doing something. So there's my puppy. There's my little flowers. You can do it in individual parts and pieces. Put it on your bigger, bigger, bigger piece of fabric and you'll have like a full size quilt. 
or whatever size that you want to do. This would make a great baby quilt. Now, once you get it colored in, you're going to iron it. And I have a couple, well, I have a handout and it goes through this whole process. So don't worry if you miss a part. But one thing I want to say is that back in the day, 100 years ago, detergents weren't like they are now, right? Uh, they were a little bit milder. Today, we have detergents that are really great at getting out crayon stains. So once you do your project, what I would recommend is you wash it in a mild soap. If you give it as a gift, give them washing instructions because it's going to stay in there pretty good, but you don't want to get all aggressive with it. So how do you make an image big? Well, you can, you can take it to a printer. They'll print it out big for you. If you have a word processing program, like I have a vintage <laughs> word processing program. I have a Microsoft Publisher 2007, a really old one. You can print out multiple copies, tape them together, and get a really big image. Remember the squirrel? Well, how big do you want your squirrel to be, right? Uh, or you can have, there's projectors that you can get. Well, you know, the run way to do it is you could go on the internet and Google it. And uh, how do they say to work a software program? Um, tell a, tell a five-year-old what you want and leave the room. <laughs> so there's lots of ways to get your image on big. So uh, having said that, what we need to do is we need to go to the machine. Oh, oh there's one more thing I want to, I want to show you. I have this other image I had. And it's a cool vintage image. Can you see that? So what it is, it's this neat lady. Now, you don't have to color this in. You can do great line art. Because what I did is I took it and I made it and I stitched it out with bigger, thicker thread. I don't even have to color this in. I think this is a very contemporary looking uh, embroidery, make a pillow or something out of a vintage image. So you don't have to stick with vintage looking. You can make a vintage image into something more modern. So now let's go to the machine and what we're going to do is we're going to take that squirrel and we're going to render him again once again in the machine and take it through IQ Designer to create an outline embroidery. It's a pretty simple process. Don't forget there's a handout. I'll meet you over at the machine. So I can take an existing embroidery design and go ahead and make a crayon quilt out of it. I brought up this design that's built into the Altair. Now, in the Altair, I can blow up an embroidery design 200%. And so it's kind of smallish right now, but let's blow it up. Wow, that would be a really pretty crayon quilt. Just stitch it out. I could use it for a border. That's pretty amazing. But actually, also, you can come on in and use an existing design that's not just a one color design. So in embroidery, if I find, say, this peacock here, I can bring him in, set, and I can see that there's an outline that I can stitch by itself without the colors. So I'm going to go on down, touch this, and I can see, yes, indeed, there's an outline to this embroidery. So I could use this embroidery for a crayon quilt. But let's go into IQ Designer. That's where I can take my vintage image and make it into my vintage made modern quilt. So in IQ Designer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line design wizard, but I'm going to bring the image in using the IQ positioning app. How does that work? Well, you take the image. Now I could either have it printed out or I could have the image as a, as a saved uh, photo in my, in my iPad or phone or any other connected device. What I can do if I have the, the printed out image, take this, lay it inside the hoop, take the IQ positioning app and literally just go over the top of it, capture that picture and send that picture into IQ designer. Now, what does that look like? Oh, but wait, first I want to do this embroidery in a triple stitch. So I'm going to tell the machine before I bring that image in that I want a triple stitch. It's as easy as that. Okay. I pull up the line design wizard. I've sent it in wirelessly. I want this image. The latest one is always the one on the top. There's my squirrel set. Now, if I need to crop my squirrel, I can't. I don't. The machine did a super job. Okay. Set. 
and there's my squirrel. Now, if you were timing me, I don't know how long that took. Probably faster than it would be to trace it out on a piece of on a piece of muslin to, to embroider, right? Now, if I want to make my squirrel smaller, I can. If I want to fit into a five by seven hoop, all I do is I touch the size key, and I'm going to make this artwork small enough to fit into my five by seven hoop. Because I could stitch him out in red thread as opposed to black, not color him in, and he'll be another vintage style, which is called red work. Now, in the background, I hope you can see it. There's that, there's like a faint image. That's my background image in case I want to make any modifications to my, to my artwork that I brought into the machine. I don't really want that. Now that you can see, I have this perfect little squirrel. When I say OK, I can take it on to Next. Now, here I can set the stitch length of the stitches that I want. And if I want to do that, I wanted, I'm OK with what it is now for just regular embroidery thread. But remember that lady I showed you? Here she is. And I stitched her in a 12-weight thread. And a 12-weight thread is a little bit thicker. So I am going to use a size 90 embroidery needle as opposed to a 75 and I'm going to increase the stitch length. Super simple to do. I come down here. That's called the run pitch. That's just a fancy name for the stitch length and I'm going to increase that and tell the machine that I want a longer stitch length. Yeah, 96.1, something like that's going to be okay. You could always do a test sample to see if it's going to work perfectly for your thread. Now, I just want my squirrel to be regular standard length, so I'm going to take it back. And I, whoops, and I know that's the standard length because it has a black box around it. If I make any changes, I touch set. Now, when I go to preview, it's going to take those, that artwork, that stitch link that I told it, and it's going to make me a squirrel. Squirrel! There I am. I'm ready to send it to embroidery. Set. OK. Update the background image. Now, I really don't need to because I made my squirrel smaller. So I really don't need to see that other artwork. Cancel. And then there's my squirrel. I'm ready to embroider. And when I go to embroidery, I'm going to have this awesome squirrel in about nine minutes. So I'm going to get ready to embroider my squirrel. Then we get to start the really fun part of coloring him in. So if you're ready, I know I am. Green means go. Let's go. Now, the embroidery's done. That only took a few minutes. And ah, you remember that smell? Boy, it takes you back. Now it's time for the real fun. So get a good quality crayon, right? Doesn't have to be this brand, but a good quality one. And you're going to color in the inside where you embroidered. Now, do you have to do that to get a vintage quilt? Absolutely not. If I had done the squirrel, in a red thread, it would be another vintage style quilt called a red work quilt. So that's even easier. You don't even have to color it in. Also, the quilt behind me, the vintage quilt behind me, it's done just in an outline. Now, this hand done, but I could reproduce this with my embroidery machine pretty fast. And notice, you could do it with the different colors that come in the flowers. So you don't have to stick with coloring quilts, but they are pretty fun. Now, what you need to do to color in the, on the fabric, right? The fabric's going to scoot if you don't have something behind it. So we're lucky. We have the stabilizer already behind the fabric. So that gives us a solid base for coloring it in. If you didn't have that, if you had removed the stabilizer, what they did back in the day is they took freezer paper, and they took the shiny side of the freezer paper and on the back of the fabric they ironed the shiny side of the freezer paper to the back of the fabric. It's a temporary bond and it made the the fabric uh, like paper that you could draw on it. So that's another option that you could do. 
but I just leave the stabilizer in, right? Because we already have that flat surface on there. The other thing that I do is when you're doing a line image like this, especially with a lot of these little lines, you can, re the machine's automatically going to, the, the, the Altair set up to cut the jump stitches. Well, when they're, when they're little, little lines like this, I don't necessarily want the machine to cut jump stitches for everyone. It increases the run time and kind of little small areas. I kind of want the integrity of the stitch to stay. So what I do is I increase the distance that the machine is going to be told to cut jump stitches. So I go about 20 millimeters and that tells the machine for every jump stitch between two certain areas, that are 20 millimeters or greater, cut the jump stitch. But for these small ones, I literally come on in with my little scissors, I clip the top thread, and I leave the bobbin, bottom bobbin thread behind. And I think it holds that stitch in well, because there should be, some of these lines could be just a couple stitches. So having said that, then you take your crayon and you literally just color in. Now, I could sit and do this all day. This is just so much fun. You have no idea. Now, what colors can you use? You can use every color. You can blend everything in. You can do multiples on there. After you finish coloring it, you can, of course, take it out of the hoop. You, after you do all your colors, then what you're going to do is, oh, and notice, see, I took my big squirrel and I made him petite. This is my pocket squirrel, as opposed to my gigantic squirrel that ate Chicago that I showed you earlier in the video. So what you do is after you do that, you take your colored in image and you take and you iron the, color, the crayon on in. So you lay it on a nice flat surface. Take, I use a piece of deli paper. So I just use deli paper. I use it for piecing on quilts too, but so I happen to have it around. But you lay that on the top to protect your iron. You use a non-steam on a, on a medium, pretty hot iron, and you just literally just iron that crayon into the fabric. And you can check your colors that way. You can always come back in and color more if you want it a little bit darker. But remember, once you color it in, you've colored it in. So go light and then go dark. So I think you can agree. We've done some pretty fun stuff. Getting the embroidery, pretty darn fast, right? Coloring it in, just plain fun. We can make other vintage quilts too. So thank you for joining me. I think the Baby Lock Altair with IQ Designer is something that you can take even the oldest Oh, century old inspiration and <laughs> take that vintage and make it modern. I'm going to shoot it off to George. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the Altair because it's not just for vintage quilts. It does all kinds of fun stuff. It's an amazing machine. So take it away, George, and tell him a little bit more about that awesome Altair. Thanks, Kathy. As usual, that was an incredible presentation. The Baby Lock Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine in the industry. It has a large 9.5 by 14 inch embroidery area, plus 494 built in beautiful designs, 30 of the most amazing fonts that you can arc and ray and edit, plus many large, beautiful monograms. You have the ability to create a design without a computer with the IQ designer. You can take an image from a phone, send it to a machine, and it turns into beautiful embroidery instantly. You also have an automatic applique creator to create great borders around names and, and other embroidery designs. Plus, of course, we love our never miss needle threader, and it also cuts all the jump stitches that you want. Now it's not just for embroidery. This is an incredible machine with 11.25 inch opening. It also has a uh, automatic fabric sensor. This fabric sensor senses heavy fabric like denim and sews automatically from there. It will also sew on lighter fabric like Trico. It will sew elastic, it's incredible. Now for the diff real difficult fabric and for quilting, it has a digital dual feed with a belt system that controls all fabrics perfectly. It also has a laser guide, so you can guide for that perfect seam allowance. It's incredible. As I mentioned, this is dollar for dollar, the most advanced machine in the industry. We have a special package right now. The total package value is 
$14,999, but we have it on sale for $8,999. We're offering free shipping across the country as well as we have interest-free payments of under $188 a month. But that's not all. We have a special bonus for a limited time and while supplies last, we're including 63 spools of beautiful embroidery thread, two separate design collections by Anita Good Design, which has over 600 design files in all different styles. We're including stabilizer, all kinds of needles, bobbins, and a membership to Love of Knowledge. We're here, you're gonna see all kinds of demonstrations and techniques on the Baby Lock Altair and other sewing techniques. This is for a limited time. But I also mentioned we have interest rate payments. Now, for those who don't want to finance, we have even a better bonus. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 or click on the link to order today. Bye for now.